Hey guys, Howard here with yet another addition to my Acoustic Blues series, and I believe this is number seven in the line. And what I'm going to do in this one is uh, kind of bring in some of the previous ideas, just a few things like a few walk-ups or turnarounds or whatever, uh, but also introduce some new stuff into the fold because the idea is that you can just mix all this stuff together and come up with your own self-styled blues, okay? So if you enjoyed this lesson, I've got a link in the uh, description box below to a lot of other lessons on acoustic blues guitar, okay? So what I'm going to do at first is just play the uh, demonstration for you, and I will be playing it at tempo, but don't let that dismay you. It's just so I can get through it and let you know what it will ultimately sound like, but you can slow this thing way down and it'll still sound really good, and of course, after I play it through, I'll take you through it measure by measure, all nice and slow, and making it as easy as possible to understand. So here we go. So let's jump right into it. We're working with a 12 bar blues in E and we're just gonna break it down phrase by phrase, lick by lick, and uh, explain exactly what I'm doing, okay? So we're starting off with an E7 chord, which you can see on the screen as well as on the tab, and we are bouncing off of that sixth string. So we're hitting the sixth string twice and then the chord twice as well. And then we play seven on the sixth string, five on the uh, fifth string, and seven on the uh, fifth string. And that's your first phrase. And then you want to hit that E string, the sixth string again, open, and let it ring for a bit while you go into the lick. So you can see I'm playing a double stop right out the gate. You can see that on the tab. But I kind of sweep into it. If you like that sort of sound, it's pretty cool and bluesy, and I'm just muting slightly back here with the side of my hand or the palm of my hand, raking across the strings until I get to the double stop. So, so far we have... We come back and play the uh, E7 figure again. Then we do a walk up on the sixth string. It'll be open, two, three, four. But we're swinging down with upstrokes to grab the open E and B strings, the first and second string. And that's gonna walk us right into the four chord, which is A7. So let me play all of that again. Once again, that takes us to the four chord, and we're using basically an A7, but theoretically it moves from A7 to A13, and then A7 again, okay? And on the A7, we're playing so far, okay? So uh, you can see that on the tab for sure, but let me play that nice and slow. into that first double stop. So you can see I'm hitting that open A string in between each of those, twice at first, in fact. One more time. And you can see I'm playing those standard uh, descending double stops off of the A7 chords. So that nice and slow is... it all together again.
and we make our way back to the one chord again and this time I'm using an E7 sharp 9. It's really nice when you're playing the blues to mix these chords up. Use sevenths and then seven sharp nines and straight nine chords. It just adds more color to it. So I'm coming back and playing an E7 sharp 9 this time. So you can see, aside from the difference in the chord, it's that same E riff again. Now, let that string ring out, the open E string, and head to the next lick. You can see it on the tab, of course, but let me do that nice and slow. So we have... Now we make our way to the 5 chord, which is a B7, and I've used this rhythm before with you guys, so you'll probably recognize it, but it's a way of slicing up the chord and thumping some bass notes. It's as simple as that. So I hit the B chord, play the root note twice, play the chord twice, then play each of them one time. So it's 2, 2, 1, 1. And when you put that together rhythmically, it sounds like... Now I'm moving to a C9, okay, uh, like I said, it adds a little bit of color when you mix all these chords up, and I'm going to play a C9 into a B7 sharp 9. So from that B7 chord again, we have... And then we play our first turnaround, which is... So this is a different turnaround from what I've used before, but similar, of course, in many ways with the open strings. So hit that E string, the sixth string, and let it ring out. And I'm kind of sliding into the fifth fret on the A string and uh, just walking my fingers down and using the open E and B strings again. Um, and I think the picking on that is best down, up, up, down, up, up. You can use whatever fingers you want. Um, those are the ones of choice for me, but whatever works for you is great. And again, I'm using that B7 sharp nine and just playing a, a chilled kind of rhythm, if you will. Two downs, one up, one down. So let me play that again from the B7 so that it makes... Uh, Makes a little musical sense. And then we start the next 12 bar go around, okay? So here we go with that. break all of that down. Once again, hitting that open E string and letting it ring through the lick. Nice and slow again. And then we go into a standard blues boogie pattern. So nice and slow. Give that like a little bit of a quarter bend for that nice bluesy feel. Once again, hitting that open E string, letting it ring out, and playing another lick. Very similar, but slightly different. Those little variations can really make a big difference. And then we're doing another walk-up, and this is a new one that uh, I haven't used yet in the previous lessons. Pretty easy to play, and again, I think alternate stroking is the best way to go there. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay. 
And that's going to take us to the four chord again, of course, which is A or A7, depending on how you uh, choose to look at it. And uh, what I'm doing here is using double stops again, um, and I'm playing this. That's the phrase, okay? If you let that open G string come through, it still sounds pretty good, right? Like Kind of like Pusher by Steppenwolf. Uh, but... Uh, you can also mute the string out just by laying this finger a little bit lazily across the D string and that way you'll just get the B and the D, but either way is totally fine. And you play that twice, okay? Uh, once again, I'm using primarily down strokes, but hitting that A chord at the end with an up stroke. Uh, that seems to work best for me and uh, that might work best for you as well. And then, of course, we head back to the E chord, and once again, I'm using an E7 sharp 9. And it's basically that same phrase that we opened with, but we're adding a little walk into the 5 chord. Four, five, six on the uh, E string. And then we're playing a B7 like this, 7th fret on the uh, E string, 6th string. 7th fret on the D string, and 8th fret on the uh, G string, okay? And I'm using a cross-picking pattern again, down, down, up, down, down, up this time. Four times, move it down a whole step to A7, same thing. whatever fingering you want to do that walk up you can even just use your first finger if you want if that's more comfortable to land the uh, b7 chord okay and then we play the uh, closing turnaround once again hitting that e string and letting it ring out okay now that's a, a very common a blues turnaround or ending or however you want to look at it and it's often played like this and I've played it that way in a previous lesson, but I think it's really good to know different ways to play the same thing on the guitar. That way you can hit it wherever you happen to be and also get a different sound, right? These strings are brighter and these are a bit heavier because you've got that wound string there. You can really hear a tonal difference, right? So uh, let me play that nice and slow for you. Once again, I think down, down, up, a cross-picking pattern is best for this. And then a little pinch of hybrid picking at the end, picking the D string with your pick and using a finger in your right hand, whichever one you prefer, to play the B string. And then we play a simple E9. So I'll, uh, I'll post the uh, demo of it again right here so you guys can see the whole thing, continuity and all that good stuff, right? And anyway, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. And once again, thanks to everyone who drops all the wonderful comments and the subscribers and all the rest, okay? So I shall see you in the next video.